What's going on today? In this video, is gonna be a simple, short, sweet video. I'm gonna try to make it under five minutes. Um, I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up a brackish tank. This I just set up my first brackish tank yesterday, um, two days ago. I just set it up two days ago, and it's still cycling through. And there's a lot of videos out here that say it's always oh, this is a simple way. This is a simple way. This is a simple way. I'm gonna show you guys the absolute simple way, step by step, how I did it. If you just follow what I do it will work for you literally i kid you not it doesn't matter what tank size you have if you just follow what i do it will work for you i promise a hundred percent all right so the main components that you're going to need is a bucket if you're wanting to recreate the way that i'm doing it i have a five gallon bucket that the dude i brought this i bought this tank from dropped off a big thing of sand i threw the sand away didn't want it but luckily i kept the bucket it's a five gallon bucket you want a circulation pump that they use for them salt water tanks or stream uh, tanks. This is a MCP5 circulation, which works up to 55 gallons. It doesn't really matter. I would preferably go to your local fish store. They usually have cheap ones like this. I bought this one for $40. You're gonna want a thing of sea salt. A lot of people use Instant Ocean. I use this specifically. So if you want to recreate exactly how I did it, I recommend you buying this. This is about, I think, 30 to $40 for this. And it says it's recommended up to, it does up to 55 gallons, but I'll show you how much I have after I did a 40 gallon. And then you're gonna want a hydrometer. A lot of people talk shit on hydrometers saying, oh, they're not that accurate, this isn't that. They're actually up, accurate up to a .001 specific gravity. And we tested it at my local fish store to make sure that it was good before I brought it home. And if you're on a budget, this is very good for you. I will eventually recommend up, upgrading to, uh, what's it called, a spectrometer, spectrometer or something. Um, it's a lot more accurate, it's digital, it's easier, but if you're just starting off and th that's perfectly fine, this is like 10 bucks, like seven to $10, I promise you. And then you're going to want a quarter cup, any kind of work, just make sure it's a quarter cup. It's faster if you use this rather than a measuring cup. Measuring cup, you got to pour this all, da, da, da. This, all you got to do is scoop it, level it, and pour it. Now I'm going to show you guys how you want to set it up once you start mixing your salt water. Also, if my toes pop out in this video, don't judge me. Believe it or not, this is how I was actually doing it for the first 20 gallons. And then I ended up switching to the other tub, which is right down the hallway. This takes forever, but... What we're gonna do at this point is you're gonna fill up the water and you want, this is where my shower head is at, it's about even. You want it about room temperature water. Just stick your hand in there. And if it's colder in your house, obviously it's gonna feel hotter. If it's warmer in your house, it's gonna feel colder. But you want it about room temperature. You honestly do not have to measure it. If you wanna measure the first bucket, adjust your shower head, fill while it's warm. And then just for you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a thermometer and see what the temperature's at. Okay, we got the thermometer. I'm gonna drop it in there. It's in there somewhere. I'm gonna go ahead and find this thermometer. And we're reading at about 82 degrees. That's perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it's that's perfectly fine. It's better to have the water warmer than it is to have the water colder. Water is filling up. It's still filling up. Um, when I do it here, it takes about five minutes. Um, I'm going to give you a short little tour of my Mbuna tank. Here's my Mbuna. It is 55 gallons. This is the tank. There has been zero aggression issues besides this guy right here. I'm guessing that he is the tank boss. But if you want to see who really is the high and mighty when it comes to feeding time, it's this guy. If the camera will focus. This is a temporary tank for them. The Mbunas do not mess with them at all. They're super fast, so they get away. But this is it. I got, I think, two Jaharis in there. Two Fire Zebras. Um, I forget what these ones are called, but they're so beautiful. These yellow, oh, this is a yellow fin. When I got the yellow fin, this dude was so white, and this guy down here too, they were so white and so stressed at the fish store. And when I brought them here, I had no idea they were gonna turn this dark. It honestly blew my fucking mind. Um, I got two Demasonized in here. 
A lot of people say they're super, super aggressive, but honestly, neither one of them are even a tank boss. And then I do have one Calvis in here. He has a Lake Tanganyika um, fish, but he's been doing perfectly fine. He is super shy. He does come out. This is his favorite hiding spot over here. There's hiding spots for everybody. Um, I do have a Pleco that just hides over here. Um, but let's get back to the video. All right, guys, now at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to set your, what is this? Your flow fan, whatever it's called, brain fart. And you're going to put it in the bottom and you're going to stick it down there. This one has a suction cup. I mean, it's cheap. You can get the more expensive one with a magnet, but I mean, it works. So you want to set it down in there near the bottom. And then you're going to want to suction it. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, to be honest. But you can feel when it's suction because you get some resistance. And you're going to want to point it towards this wall, but up a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead, dry off our hands because you never want to deal with electrical equipment with wet hands. And then we're going to take our plug and we're going to plug it up. And as you can see, it's starting to mix. And this this is perfectly fine right here. You just want something that you see you have some type of circular motion in here, something where it looks like the bottom water is pushing up and the top water is pushing down. You don't want it to have where it's um, creating bubbles in the water. Um, that's that's not going to be good. You don't want some, like really a lot of agitation. So at that point, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our bucket of salt. And then just a piece of advice, when you're handling salt, every time you're done using it, immediately close it up. Try to prevent getting water on the bags. If you get water in the bag, salt loves to draw moisture out of the air and it will clump up and you're gonna have a very bad time. That's so what we're gonna do. This is a quarter cup. We're gonna take this much, you're gonna love it out. One. Level it out. Two. Level it out. Three. And then you want to take just a little bit, just enough to about cover the bottom. Doesn't have to be exact. Just a little bit cover the bottom. Four. And you're going to go ahead and rinse this off because you don't want it hardening up. And at this point, you're going to set a timer for nine minutes. Nine to 15 minutes is a pretty good um, area of where, how long to mix it. Um, you can do longer, but they tell you not to do more than two hours. But honestly, I found that nine minutes was the sweet spot for me. It could be different for you. So I will go ahead and start with a 15 minute timer. And then based off of how your water looks, as you see, it's murky right now. Once it clears up super good and you put your hand in there and you don't feel any grains of salt, then you're good. So I'll set my timer for nine minutes and I'll be back. While we're waiting on that, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little preview of what my 10 gallon, this is a 10 gallon planted. It is a dry start. This is what it's looking like. This is where I'm going to rehome my two pea puffers at. Going to be here. Oh, uh, yes, I'm going to add more plants, but I can't add plants right now. Um, this is what it's looking like right now. I found out that the I tried to do the moss spread, but with this type of rock, it honestly does not work that well. But this is what it looks like. I mean, it's not too shabby. All right, guys, my timer just went off. I gave it a, literally just went off 10 seconds ago. I just finished watching the video. Uh, what we're going to do is going to unplug this and never pull it from here. You know, basic child safety. Boom. And I got this little hang towel thing that I just drip right here so it doesn't get wet. And then we're gonna go ahead and unclip it. Take this out, be very careful with it because these are super sensitive. Very, very sensitive. And I can just smell the salt. And then now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our hydrometer. I'm gonna take it, boom. First, but when you first, before you use it, read the instructions, you wanna rinse it off. They say season it for 24 hours, but it's really not necessary to be 100% honest with you. But go ahead and 
rinse it off with fresh water and then you're gonna dip it straight in like this and go all the way down and you're gonna see some bubbles. All right, gonna lift it up. See that line, we're gonna pull out a little bit. That's about good enough right there. When you take it, you're gonna bring it over here. You just wanna give it, my sink's not dirty, that's sand. I was doing some water changes and stuff this morning, so don't judge me. You wanna set on a level surface, which is usually a countertop would be perfect. I'm gonna look at it and you can see that's exactly 1.012 which is what is mostly recommended for all, if not most brackish water fish. And especially if you're doing puffer brackish fish, like I'm doing this for my green spotted puffer, 1.012 is literally about as good as you're going to get. Um, um, the per best range you want for first setting up a brackish is about 1.010 to 1.012. Now I went ahead and did 1.014 just to make the transition into marine, which eventually as adults need to be 1.022, just a little bit easier. But obviously if you want it a little stronger, you add a little more salt, but the key is three fourths of a cup per five gallons with a little bit extra and that's going to get you to about 1.011 to 1.012 um and then that's that's pretty much it and then i'll go ahead and show you what the level is in my 40 gallon breeder after i empty this out this is my 40 gallon breeder it's barren right now nothing in there it's still cycling i gotta add a little bit of ammonia later today i'm gonna take this well, it's about right there. And we're hoping of a range of 1.010 to 1.014. It's got my carpet all wet, but it's okay. I'll bang it a little bit, get any air bubbles out because air bubbles can mess up the reading. I'll set it on a flat level surface. And as you can see, it's gonna level out. We're sitting at about 1.01. So it all depends on like your perspective, but it's 1.01. Might as well say 1.02 to be honest with you. So the camera's picking it up a little weird and it's hard to get the angle. But that's pretty much how you're going to get it. If you're going with that method, your good range for long as you're between 1.010 and 1.012. And to be honest, if you can go a little bit higher to 1.014, that's good. But anything between like 1.08 lower than to 1.010 is like if you want to super slowly acclimate. But I, I recommend 1.010 to 1.012. And then anywhere up until 1.020 is also considered brackish. But once you get up to 1.025, that's when you get to full marine water. But what we're going to do is I'm going to put my puffer in there. I'm gonna keep them at about 1.012 to 1.014. And every couple months, we're gonna slowly bump them up to 1.016, 1.8, 1.9, all the way up until once he's about four inches, we'll have them up to about full marine water. Every time you get done using these, you always wanna fill it up and you wanna wish it around a little bit, not too much, cause you don't wanna bang this this pin around because it's very sensitive. You can see I'm handling it with a lot of care. You just want to kind of do like that. Do it like this. And then you just sit it down and just let it air dry. Hey guys, that's the video. I said I was gonna try to make it a short five minutes, but it's honestly not that easy. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna put the clips on my other tanks in there, but if you want a brackish water tank, follow the exact steps with the exact stuff that I got, and it's 100% gonna work for you. I'm telling you, it's going to work. As long as you're in that 1.010 to the 1.014, you're gonna be perfectly fine. Um, if you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'm very good at replying to YouTube comments. And other than that, that's it for the first video.